I'll tell you what, doing this show with you gets my heart pumping every single day. And frankly, I'm just happy it's still beating. And for that, I can thank the good Lord Almighty for connecting me with Dr. Ken Kronhaus at Lake Cardiology and the amazing bud scan technology that Dr. Kronhaus identified as a lifesaver and pioneered here in Central Florida, had it before any other medical facility. The bud scan saved my life. It's an amazing heart scan that just sees your heart from the inside out. And um, it can show things that you need to know giving you a life-saving call to action when maybe you've passed other heart tests, as I had. And if you're one of those people like me who's a candidate for a sudden lights-out heart attack, because I never, ever seem to get any chest pain or shortness of breath. So the bud scan showed I had some issues, and it saved my life. It's quick and easy. I cackle the commission that sets the standard for quality care and heart CT scanning. Thinks as highly of Lake Cardiology and Dr. Kronhaus as I do. Lake Cardiology, designated as the first and only medical facility in Central Florida, they accredit for CT scanning of the heart. How about making today the day that you finally make that call that the bud man kind of gently nags you to make every single day to Lake Cardiology, home of Dr. K. Ask him about the bud scan that saved my life and has saved thousands. It's your heart. It's your life. Got to be worth a phone call. Here's your number, 1-352-735-1400. Mark it down and call it, multi-billion dollar company doing business Calling all sports fans. If you're as big a sports fan as the Bud Man, you need to connect to Bright House. And when you connect to Bright House Networks and have ESPN, you also have access to something incredible and brand new, ESPN3.com. It's the online home for sports fans to watch an unlimited number of live sporting events in your sport of choice. You watch free. You watch free online using the world's leading live sports video website. There's nothing like it. 
ESPN3.com. Learn more and get it. Go to brighthouse.com slash my services and use your Bright House Network's account login information. You're going to love ESPN3.com. Is it time for the allegedly most powerful nation on earth with the most powerful navy on earth? And that is us to end this with the pirates. Are we going to take the slaughter of four Americans at the hands of these Muslim Somali pirates? Oh, they're just trying to raise money through ransom. They have no government. They have no country. It's a mess over there. We just got to sail around this stuff and put up with it. Well, listen, they are now committed to killing hostages. We can't tolerate this. We need to start blowing some of those ships out of the water. And then the pirates will rethink whether it's worth the next shot out to an innocent vessel to try to take their people hostage and make some money off the deal. We need to find out where their launch operations are. And we need to be careful because there are hostages they are still holding. But I'm sorry, there is collateral damage uh, that is possible in any scenario like this. We know that in Afghanistan and Iraq. Sometimes people die you don't want to kill for the greater good of taking out the enemy. Come on. Four of our innocent citizens who are distributing Bibles around the world slaughtered by these bums. And they know they can get away with it under Obama because this president is weak and he is sympathetic to Islam. And they are Muslim. Don't think that doesn't come up. I've had enough of this. Where's the spine in this country and in this administration? We don't even hear from the president. I hope the next thing we hear is that they have blown a bunch of these pirate ships out of the water. 407-916-5400. Tom from Orlando, good morning. Yeah, good morning, bud. I don't think you're going to get your uh, wish. I don't think Obama has the spine or the fortitude to even attack any of these Somali pirate uh, strongholds. Like you said, he's a Muslim sympathizer. and You know, he did, he did, though, he did order those Navy SEALs, you know, to take those pirates out right between the eyes when they hijacked the Maersk and they had the, they had the captain. He did do that. Okay, that's uh, one in... One time in two-plus years that he's shown what we need from a commander-in-chief. Well... I, I use that term lightly. He's really not a commander-in-chief. Yes, he is, he is, by virtue of President of the United States. Uh, whether or not you agree that he actually uh, fills the role, that is his role. Tom, thank you very much. Let me get more from you here in a moment, and I'll tell you that we're going to see more hostages killed, more Americans killed here, and I will tell you the proof I have of that. Now, what are we going to do about it? Mr. Obama, could we at least hear something from you on this? We've heard nothing. Real-time traffic and weather together for 60 seconds. Good morning at 622. Beautiful day when whatever fog we have burns off sunshine, 78, now 60 degrees here in Orlando. I was talking to Rich Johnson at Fox News about uh, the situation when the captain was held hostage after the pirates had taken the Maersk early in the Obama administration. He ordered the Navy SEALs to take, uh, to take the guys out, and they saved the captain's life, okay? But they did capture some pirates, one of whom was sentenced after a trial here stateside last week to 33 years in prison. And one of the pirate leaders now says killing hostages as a result has become a part of our rules. Quote, that from now on anyone who tries to rescue hostages in our hands will only collect dead bodies. It will never ever happen that hostages are rescued and we are hauled to prison. That to me explains what happened on the ship with the four Americans. And that explains to me why it's going to happen again. You can't have 
an American president and a commander-in-chief go silent and do nothing as Americans are slaughtered by pirates? WWRD. What would Reagan do? Blow them out of the water. It needs to happen. Steve in St. Cloud, how are you? Hey, bud, I hear that once you get over 60, you start getting soft in your old age. Wait a minute, you're telling the bud man I'm too soft on the pirates? I'm thinking you're a little bit too soft. What do we need to do, Steve? Toughen me up. Well, I'll tell you, in, the, in this case here, they came in there and they saw those hostages were killed. They should have lined every one of those clowns up on the deck of that boat and mowed them down. I agree with that. You're absolutely right. We need to, we need to start taking a stand around the world that we're going to be the nice guy until you mess with us. And when you mess with us, shock and awe is going to seem like a nursery rhyme. That's what we need to do. We need to start sending the message that yeah. when you mess with us, yeah. it's going to be so fierce that you don't want it no more. Steve, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to save myself here. I just hadn't brought that issue up. I feel exactly the way you feel. Please, don't call me tough on the pirates, too soft on the pirates. I appreciate you. You're right on the money. That would be a really good signal, okay, to the rest of the pirates to say, gee, you know what, maybe we ought to figure out a way to make a living some other way. And maybe we better never even think about killing Americans again. Yes, that would have been good. That would have been the first step. No pirates living on that ship. Why did that not happen? Are you kidding? I mean, come on. In World War II, didn't we kill every Jap and every Nazi we came face to face with? So this is an undeclared war, but they've declared war on us. Why would we not kill every Muslim Every pirate on that ship. Steve, thank you. Here is Frank. Good morning on the road to Tampa, talking with a bud man. Uh, my son-in-law has a bunch of SEALs that he's fr has friends with, and uh, Obama never made that decision to shoot that pirate. It was the captain of the ship that made that decision, and Obama took credit for it. And every SEAL that I know of will tell you that he did not make that decision. Now, that's really, that, that, that's really interesting. Everything I have read says that the order to do it, they were ready to do it and wanted to do it, came, though, from the commander-in-chief, which well, seems to me that, that that would be the proper channel. You're suggesting otherwise. I'm not suggesting. I'm telling you, you get somebody that knows some SEALs, and they will tell you that the captain of that ship made the decision because Obama would what do you and think? What do you think Charles. should happen in the wake of the slaughter of these four Americans? Oh, I, I agree with you 100 percent. You know, I used to fly a gunship in Vietnam. You take a hostage with us, folks. We're going to take you down. You and tell me what you think Obama will do. Nothing. Just like everything else. The only thing he's interested in is getting labor unions back into power so he can get reelected. Oh, by the way, we'll be talking about that and we'll be talking about his complete inaction vis a vis Gaddafi in Libya. So stay tuned, Frank. I got red meat coming up for you and a lot of folks. I got somebody from Special Ops on line one. Mark, welcome to Bud Hedinger Live. Have you got some perspective on this situation with the pirates? Sure, Bud. I, the gentleman before I agree, uh, the commander in chief never made that decision. Uh, it, it was on ground, the commander of the SEAL team uh, made that decision to take those pirates out. Uh, Obama never made that decision. What do you think he'll do now? What do you think he should do? Hello. Gone. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. Special Ops guy, God bless you. Appreciate so much all you bring to serve in our country. Uh, okay, so supporters of uh, Bill Nelson's attempt to make an end run around Rick Scott's decision to kill the high-speed rail boondogger are holding a rally here in Orlando today. But even Buddy Dyer doesn't think within two days, and that's the new deadline from the Obama administration uh, for that stimulus, Obamulus money to go somewhere else if they don't come up with a high-speed rail plan that Scott will sign off on. Even Buddy Dyer is expressing doubts that this can be done. This is not Bill Nelson's job. He's sticking his nose where it doesn't belong. We've got a governor who needs to make these decisions. It's the governor who's got to balance our budget, not the senator, Bill Nelson. Okay? We'll keep our eyes on it. Nothing new beyond the fact that the pro-high-speed rail forces are going to hold a rally here in Orlando today. They had one earlier this week in, uh, 
in Tampa. I still don't think this thing is going to fly if, if Bill Nelson stands tall. Directly ahead, the Wall Street Journal report as I talk with Mike.